In today's project diary, I will teach you how to grow many types of squash from seed. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to grow a squash. Now it's roasting hot in the shed today, so I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. But here's how you do it. So all you need to do is get yourself a squash. Now the top part is here and the base is here. Now this is going to be where all the seeds are and the top part is where all the meaty part is. So all you need to do is just cut through the bottom section. Now be very, very careful at this point. If you're using a sharp knife, it's quite easy to slip and I don't want to be responsible for you cutting your hand or anything bad. So be very careful when you're cutting the base of the squash here. Now this is a butternut squash. You can use this same uh, technique for all types of squash. Uh, it's just slightly different for pumpkins, but I'll do that in a different video. As you can see, there's plenty of seeds to harvest here. And just this one squash will provide many seeds for me to grow and plant out this year. Also, if you have too many seeds, you can eat these as a really tasty treat. The seeds are packed full of nutrition, and if you want to uh, treat yourself, all you need to do is put them on a baking tray, put them in an oven and roast them for a bit, and if you really want to be cheeky, you can put some maple syrup on them and make them a little bit extra, extra special. You can also make them salted or unsalted, but I'm on a really low salt diet at the moment, so uh, I just snack on them once they've dried out. So once you've scooped out all the seeds with a spoon, you basically just want to dry them off and leave them in a warm area. So I'm just going to use some paper towel here or kitchen roll if you're English. People are still getting confused of why I call it kitchen roll. Uh, so I'm just going to get some paper towels and place the seeds out. And you, bas you basically want to get them separate. You don't want them touching each other because they'll dry out a lot quicker if they're, they're separate. Also, if there's bits of the stringy uh, stringy parts of the squash or some of the flesh left on the seeds you want to get rid of that as, as best that you can uh, but all you need to do is if it's not as warm as it is today you can um, spread these out onto some paper towel and leave them in a warm area like an airing cupboard or something like that or if you're fortunate like me today and you've got some really lovely sun you just need to leave them out for an hour or so until they just harden up the, the outer shell needs to go a little bit hard uh, and it's as simple as that really now I usually get all of my vegetables and fruit from uh, food waste bins that my greengrocer usually gives me uh, but I didn't pick any up this week so this is actually a fresh squash um, so I'm not going to waste it at all I'm going to uh, boil it up tonight and make some uh, butternut squash soup so definitely don't waste anything here if you can so once the seeds have dried out for a couple of hours they should look a bit like this they're much cleaner uh, and they're a lot easier to use now Allowing that shell to harden for a couple of hours will reduce any kind of risk for you to rot the seed just in case you accidentally overwater them later on. And it should give you a lot better germination rate doing it like this. So I'm just using some multi-purpose compost in this seed tray and I'm pushing them in as deeply as I can. Now ideally you want these seeds to be around three times the depth of the seed. Uh, I can't really get that in these seed trays but I'm going to do my best and push them down as much as possible. It's still going to work because they're only going to be in these, uh, these trays for a couple of weeks. So once you've put the seeds in, just backfill the soil slightly, pack it down gently, not too tight, and then water them in. Give them a really good watering and always label them up. Because if you're growing quite a lot this year, and like me, you do multiple seeds and, and different varieties in each tray, you might get confused later on. Once you're finished, keep them in a warm place and keep an eye on them. Within a week, you should start seeing them pushing through the soil, and within two weeks, they should start looking like this. So I'm not sure if you can see, but these are uh, just over two weeks old um, and I have been um, trying to grow some eggplant um, aubergine in the front and they've only just started to sprout, so these ones are going to take a little bit longer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to repot the, the squash now um, because even though it does look sunny, uh, we're still having really cold nights for the spring. It's a really late spring this year. So I'm just going to repot these into slightly bigger pots so they don't become root bound. Um, and then hopefully I can pot them on in bigger pots later on. So I'm just going to do that now. So as always, make sure there's loads of drainage holes in whatever pot that you decide to grow these in. I use a braddle to just push through uh, and these work perfectly fine. So using a spoon, I'm just going to help prise out the seedling. You don't want to dig into the root system. You want to make sure you get right to the bottom of the tray and pull the uh, seedling out gently. Look at the lovely root system on this. It's growing perfectly. 
So I'm just going to put it in the centre of the pot and then I'm going to backfill with some extra multi-purpose compost. Now there's been lots of people asking me why I do so many different transplants into different sized pots and it's basically I like to start uh, my seedlings in these seed trays and then I transplant into these smaller pots because it's a lot easier to manage the watering system. Uh, if you put these in a really big pot you're basically just wasting loads and loads of water and, and loads of soil that you don't really need later on. So you can put a small bit of soil in the base of this pot at the beginning, it may help it raise up a little bit but you don't want to bury these seed stems too much, you just want to carry on the same soil level throughout the growing period uh, and then all I've done is just pushed it down slightly, again not too much, you don't want to pack the root system down too much, you want to allow them to, to breed out into the new soil and then water it in as always and again don't forget to label these up. So you might not need to water these every day but keep an eye on the soil, just keep it moist at all times and just water it when needed and then just keep them in a really warm sunny spot. Now these seedlings grow really quickly and these are just 30 days from sowing despite having really cold weather. Unfortunately the cold weather continued and here they are after 40 days but they're still looking really healthy. So now my squash are getting to about this size, they're ready to pot on outside. Now I'm going to put these in a square foot garden and the regular square foot garden rules are uh, one per two squares because they basically just trail all over the floor. Um, the other advice is you can do four per square if you're using a cage uh, but I'm going to try growing these vertically up the trellis that I made. Um, so I'm just going to pot these on now and show you how to do that. So as we still don't seem to be having any spring weather, it's more like autumn, you really want to harden these seedlings off. If you don't know what hardening off means, it's basically trying to get these seedlings acclimatised to the colder weather and the soil temperatures outside. Now that may sound technical, but all you need to do is leave the seedlings outside on the first day for one hour, two hours on the second day, so on and so forth until you've done it for the week and your seedlings have been outside for seven hours, that's the perfect time to then sow these outside and hopefully eliminate any transplant shock. So all I've done is squeeze the base of the pot gently and if your pot's slightly root bound, you just wanna prise the root system out so it can then grow into the new soil. Then place the seedling into the hole that you've already dug, backfill gently and then press the soil down, again, not too firmly, but you do wanna make sure that the seedling is stable. Now plants like squash, peppers and tomatoes really need a good level of calcium in the soil. If you haven't already seen my soil amendments video, the link is here, but as you know I've already added lots of calcium, carbon and nitrogen, so this soil should have lots of nutrients that this plant needs really early on in the stage of growing. The other handy tip is to crush a couple of eggshells in the potting hole before you put the plant in. I've done another video here if you want to check that out. The eggshell calcium isn't plant available straight away but it will break down as the plant matures and hopefully this will reduce or stop the chances of your fruit being spoilt from blossom end rot this year. Now I'm also going against the square foot gardening rule of only having one per square foot for squash. Today I'm going to grow four butternut squash plants in one square foot but this is because I'm going to grow them up the trellis and vertically. Growing these vertically will mean they don't take up as much space as regular squash plants but you do raise the risk of these plants not getting enough nutrients or feed throughout the growing period. So once these plants are more established, I will give them a weekly low nitrogen liquid feed. If you want to see my playlist on how to make loads of homemade organic fertilizers, check out the link on the screen now. The reason why you want to go low nitrogen is because nitrogen will just promote lots of leafy greens and you want more potassium and phosphorus to grow really big squash. Once you finish planting them, you really want to give them a good soak in and a deep watering. It's okay to wet the leaves at this young stage, but once they mature, you really just want to water around the root system, on and around the roots, to eliminate any powdery white mildew. If you do incur this problem, here's a tutorial to help you eliminate that, and using this method will help you eliminate any fungal problems. Here's how awesome they look around 50 days after planting. Now I will do a separate video on teaching you how to grow squash vertically. It's really simple to do, but I'm running out of time today and I want to keep this video as short as possible. If you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to click the bell button for all my future notifications. That's enough from me today. Take care of yourself and good luck growing this year.
you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you've tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.